Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are Navigating the Journey. Navigating the Journey is dedicated to exploring the options and choices for the end-of-life care and to assist people to talk about their wishes and their choices. It's time to transform our culture so we shift from not talking about dying to talking about it. It's time to share the way we want to live at the end of our lives. And it's time to communicate about what we want and what we don't want for ourselves. We believe that the place for this to begin is not in the intensive care unit. Together, we can explore the various paths to life's ending. Together, we can make those difficult conversations easier. Together, we can make sure that our own wishes and those of our loved ones are expressed and respected. If you're ready to join, we ask you, navigate the journey. Today, we are visiting with a very, very special person, <laughs> and that is Cassandra de Kramer, who is on a journey, on a path that most of us have no idea about. Cassandra is living with MS. She's a talented artist with hundreds of pieces of art, which we'll get to see some of which uh, some of today. And welcome to Cassandra. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so glad you're here. Thank you very much. Yeah. So tell us about Cassandra. You've lived all over the world. You've done all kind of wonderful things. And now here you are with us. So let's begin at the top. <laughs> well, uh, I feel like I've been very, very fortunate to have just a fabulous life. I, I started pretty early inspecting everything that kind of moved, and that means bugs and all those crawly, creepy characters. And I learned the more you respect them, they respect you too. In fact, even now, I would say that even, even as I speak and talk, there are many, many things all around you Every day, if you just look, it's just magic. And that is priceless. It is priceless. Now, I read that you said that your family told you there was no money in art, and which we agree, and you were studying to be a doctor? Oh, yes. I really always uh, would find things that would kind of help people. And so um, I was curious about things to uh, do everything with especially um, all kinds of spices and foods have different properties and uh, what you do in your life even uh, well, optimism weighs on your your character and your appreciation of life so um, I, I always have just uh, drawn from the age of four I asked my mother to draw a donkey because we were reading the Bible and Jesus was on a donkey and she said, you know what you want it to look like, so you draw it. So I started at the age of four drawing and never looked back. And this is what kept me going and I got scholarships to different colleges and wound up with a master's degree in, from LA and so I never stopped. So instead of being a doctor, you became an artist. Right, but, but I also couldn't do chemistry and calculus oh. in college, so that deterred my doctoring. <laughs> well, that's okay. <laughs> that's right. So you're, you were drawing uh, bugs and, and all kinds of creatures while you're in school? Oh, yes, and uh, in fifth grade, I decided that I knew I wanted to be an artist. So I declared that that didn't have to go to school or normal things because I already knew what I wanted to do. And so for the rest of the year, I just drew people in class and kind of came in jeans, which weren't all that popular then, and kind of spent a leisurely fifth grade. The only thing was that I found at the end of the year, the year that I would again have to do the fifth grade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah. 
so tell me now, when when you finally made the decision to be an artist, to really be an artist, tell us about that. I don't think there was ever a chance that I decided I wasn't going to be an artist, mm -hmm. even as being a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. So, so now that, tell us about your travels and how art worked, or your travels and art worked together. <laughs> I'm not sure they all worked together, but <laughs> certainly were fun. And I haven't gone that many places. I certainly, certainly, certainly uh, would love to see the whole wide world and somewhat television, Netflix, etc. You can see parts of the world and you say, oh, I wish they could just deliver that food they're eating. Well, now, speaking yeah. of food, you could, we created a cookbook? Uh, yes, my first little cookbook was on mussels. Mussels? In no, fact, no, you don't need it right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, it would be nice to have uh, a cookbook about mussels. Mussels are uh, found on Woodby Island, and uh, Woodby Island. Venice. That's uh, it's, it's uh, off Seattle? the coast of Seattle, mm -hmm. between Vancouver Island and the other little islands. And um, first starting the Pen Cove mussels, uh, I had been to Turkey and had eaten mussels and found they were very delicious, so I called him and he said, yeah, you can work for me. So I was the first woman on muscle rafts. So, uh, on muscle said, rafts? Yes. To go actually to see, to get mussels? Uh, we planted them. We put them in, in bags, small, and then they grew. Then we pulled them up and took them apart. And sold them. Oh, so you, you take the babies mm -hmm. and you take them to sea and you plant them and right. then let them grow. Right. Mostly, uh, as a woman, we, we uh, were from different areas, and we would take them apart on the, on the raft, the uh, required size. Oh, so you have to let mm -hmm. them grow to a certain size. Yeah, and then they would pull them up and we would take them apart. I didn't ever put them down in, <laughs> but that's okay. So, uh, so then you learn to cook them, or do you oh. cook mussels? Oh, how you, you can how do, do you anything prepare? with them. You can do them raw, too. You can do almost anything with them. Uh, I love to put them on a little like they do in Turkey, which is kind of a little bit of a a, a barbecue broil on top. Put them in the oven like that or something, but many, many different ways. Of course, mussel soups and mussels with tobino and mussels with uh, all the other wonderful seafood. So now you were talking about Turkey. When were you in Turkey? In 1977, my friend and I were always going to go to Paris, and we talked about that for a number of years, and then we said either we're going to Paris or we're going to stop talking about it. So we went to Paris. We first went to Amsterdam and met many Turkish people there. Then we went to Paris and France and all the countries, and we took the Orient Express to Turkey. Oh. I think it was only $90. <laughs> And so we spent the rest of our vacation in Turkey. So tell me about the Orient Express, because that's, you know, something yeah, right out of... Yes, train. it's the famous train. Yeah, it was. That's all it was, was a famous train with the, the bunks for sleeping and a fast from... Uh, uh, I don't know if it goes further up to Amsterdam or not, but we caught it in Paris and went all through uh, Europe and Amsterdam. So, so in, in Turkey... You had the mussels, you said, and coffee, and what else? Oh, yeah, all their different foods, yeah. And it was very beautiful. And Turkey has problems now, but it used to be just a very, very friendly, wonderful place. Just fabulous, because of respect for life there. And butterflies would land on people. And the cats were always present. Cats? Lots of cats. <laughs> and. Uh, there was a funny little thing with a dog that we found familiar, and uh, all of it was just wonderful. We laughed so hard sometimes we felt we broke our lungs. It was really <laughs> a fabulous place. Well, let's get back to here and now. So tell us about MS. How did, what is MS, first of all, for most of us that have no idea what MS is? Well, that's like if you had a cord going to a light, and the cord worked clear up until the light. That's about what it is. Because the nerves 
work clear up until the feet and moving the feet. So and I don't know how the, the brain, nerve... The brain talks to... Right, yeah. something there. Uh, the, the nerves do not... And it's because I think it's like the cord has been exposed just in an extension cord. If it's been stripped, it won't work thoroughly. Oh, so that's... Yeah. And is it hereditary? How do you get MS? What, where does it come? I, I don't know, but my mother did have it. But they didn't know the name for it. They didn't call it that when she had it. And I didn't know that it was, that I was going to experience it later. But I experienced it really late, and not till 1902. I mean, 2002. 2002. And so, what are the symptoms? How do we know what MS is? How did you know? I started falling, and then I started walking strangely. I couldn't seem to, uh, to run very well anymore, and I loved to run. I ran and ran and ran when I was young. So just my walking, and it's decreased somewhat, so sometimes it takes me <laughs> a long time to get a very short distance, and it's very dangerous crossing streets because uh, not only my slow walking, but the, the, the street and the, how the pavement the is. The pavement's not very good. And yeah. even the sidewalks, mm -hmm. that makes it very difficult. And heavy doors in buildings are uh, impossible. But you seem to get around, okay, now it hasn't affected your art, has it? Oh, uh, no, I can still sit and draw, yeah. <laughs> well, we need to take a break. But when we come back, we are going to look at some of your early work. Okay? Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha. This is your host, Beatrice Contelmo. Uh, come and join us every Friday at 4 o'clock uh, on Perspectives of Global Justice. Hey, has your signal just been taken over, or am I supposed to be here? This is Andrew, the security guy, your co-host on Hibachi Talk. Please join us every Friday on Think Tech Hawaii. You want to talk about some socially sensitive issues relevant to women? Listen to these guys. Well, I think it's important in Judaism that we don't take the Bible literally. We take it seriously. Okay. I agree. And the, really, the key to understanding Christianity is compassion. If you're compassionate towards other people, you are living a Christian life. And that relates also to dealing with women and men and women issues as well. Mm. Are women and men equal? They're equal. Who's Why better? Be Who's better? <laughs> Depends tune on in, what. Tune in. Hi, we're back, and we are with our dear friend, Cassandra de Crema. And Sandra, Cassandra is a talented artist. She's got hundreds of pieces of work. Mm -hmm. And we're going to take a look at some of her art. And if you'll just show it to us while we talk. And now, you're living with MS, and I understand that you have been the victim of a scam like so many seniors. I don't want to talk about that. Yeah. And so that has, that they prey mm -hmm. on all of us. I have had yeah. the same scam. So how do you see, feel vulnerable? What, did, what does it make you feel like when, when people take advantage of, of seniors and disabled people? What does that feel like? Yeah, it is, it is very difficult because I think that on the little money I make, made, I could take care of things. The things was that, that I kind of felt like I needed a car because walking across uh, the streets is so difficult most of the time. So I thought if I could drive, I could go many more places and get things done because other transportation, sometimes I need a handy van to get where I'm going from the bus. It's really difficult, and besides, they, it's so dangerous. So I wanted to have a car. And uh, that ended up with sacrificing all the money I'd saved, which uh, is no means an enormous amount, but I lost it. But it didn't interfere with me drawing or painting because money somehow to me, as I, like, I feel like I'm very, very, very rich but I've never had any money. And now I'm in debt. <laughs> Can't pay my rent. Yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah. Well, uh, that's oh. not good, that people take advantage of, of these scam artists.
take advantage of seniors and disabled people, and I guess everybody, though, that people trust, mm -hmm. and then that's betrayed. Well, people are in need of money, and there's not too much opportunity to make it. You know, you can volunteer many, many places, uh, but to get paid when you're older is just practically impossible. So now you are doing art classes? I'm going to start doing art classes at uh, the Waikiki Community Center, and uh, I would like to have the people do collages of the photos of their loved ones, and we can have a lot of fun doing that. So that's, um, so that's that'll a be a, on a Tuesday starting, yeah. I think, May 16th. Good. Yeah. Good. So we'll, we'll come see you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We Great. want, um, I know this is out of, we're not supposed to do this online, but we need people to support you. We really want people to support you after being scammed. That is just, that just sends mm -hmm. goosebumps all over me. So we want people to support you yeah. and, uh, mm -hmm. and love you like we do. Mm -hmm. And so again, and you're going to do other art exhibits where you said you were doing some others. Well, I've had classes at Whole Omalahia for many years, as well as Foster and Lion. But um, we're going to have an exhibit next month of botanicals in the big gallery at Whole Omalahia. So we we'll to see some more work of our beautiful artists. Good. And it's a free. Free? Mm -hmm. And where is that? Uh, that's a state park in Kani Oi. Uh -huh. They call it the state park, yeah. And then you have another one at the Poe Gallery later in the summer. Oh, and yeah. then oh. we're back to where you are at um, the Waikiki Community Center. So we want right. people to come visit with you and come meet you just like, and come to love you like we do, yeah. and all of your great work. So, <laughs> oh. so tell us now one last thing before we close. Just what is your, your collage that you're talking about? What is a collage? A collage is where you use scraps of paper rather than paint. And the beauty of that is you can take a photograph, blow it up, and then kind of cut little shapes like the trees or the whatever it is in nature or in people and kind of make a wonderful, wonderful, it's more than art and it's satisfying because you've cut out these pieces of paper and it's just a, a real different approach. So do you have and, magazines uh, and things well, or do they bring their, their pictures? What They can start collecting all pieces of scraps of paper, which they probably already do somehow. Even envelopes, inside envelopes and things are a wonderful source of textures. And uh, sometimes do even ideas, just cutting out the shapes and the different uh, textures of paper. But certainly the loved ones, you'll just be amazed at the amount of drawing you can do with the amount of pasting up. And if we can use a computer somehow to blow up some of the photos and then just paste on top of the photos, it's, a, it's an awfully lot of fun and pretty soon you'll be doing your whole family. So is, now since we're talking about the end of life, is that a healing process? I mean working. The, to do the collage? Yeah, sure. As a healing? I don't know about healing, but it certainly occupies you, especially if you're cutting out all the little pieces of paper. It takes time. So I've done lots of big collages, and they were like therapy. I could really just concentrate on that and do other things, like even listen to music or uh, just be happy cutting out the paper. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for being here with us, but now, as the, our audience knows we were supporting the legislation, medical aid and dying. And in today's paper, in the advertiser, there is a great editorial, and it's titled Cowards Killed Medical Aid in Dying. And the lady is from Teresa Schalk. She's from Maui. And she talks about the issue that she had with her sister and how it is that these people that killed this bill has, have no idea about the suffering that people go through and how they allow the churches and the Christians to interfere with the 
issues at hand. And so it's a great article, and, and I, I can't stress enough about this whole thing of people interfering with someone else's options and choices, because that's what our program is all about, the options and the choices at the end of life, and that they should be your choice and not the church, not someone else, but the patient's choice. And so I am so honored, thrilled to see a person that had the courage that this lady did to be so open and honest about what she and her sister are going through. So I thank you again. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, and we'll see you next week. Aloha. <laughs>